Alongside the official religions, there have always been esoteric organizations who have devoted themselves to perpetuating their own spiritual heritage throughout the ages. One such organization is the Order of the Rosy Cross, whose existence was made public in the 17th century, but whose origins are more ancient. One morning in 1623, Parisians were drawn to mysterious posters that had been put up in the streets of Paris. We, the deputies of the Higher College of the Rosy Cross, do make our stay visibly and invisibly in this town by the grace of the Most High, towards whom turn the hearts of the just. We demonstrate and teach without books or distinctions the ability to speak all manners of tongues of the countries where we choose to be, so as to draw our fellow creatures from the error of death. He who takes it upon himself to see us merely out of curiosity will never make contact with us. But if his inclination seriously impels him to register with our fellowship, we who are judges of thoughts shall let him see the truth of our promises to the extent that we shall not make known the place of our meeting in this city. For the thoughts attached to the real desire of the seeker will lead us to him and him to us. These posters spoke therefore of mysterious fraternity a secret society, that of the Rosy Cross. This was not the first time this fraternity had drawn attention to itself. Several years previously, it had published three manifestos, now famous in the world of esoterism. The Fama Fraternitatis, the Confessio Fraternitatis, and the Chemical Wedding of Christian Rosengrotz. We know today that these three manifestos were drawn up by a college of the Rosy Cross, the Tubigen Circle. Notable members included Valentin Andrier and Johann Arndt. All were passionate about Hermeticism, Alchemy and the Kabbalah. The Fama Fraternitatis, published in 1614, addressed political and religious leaders as well as scientists of the time. While giving a somewhat negative review of the general situation in Europe, it reveals the existence of the Order of the Rosy Cross through the allegorical story of Christian Rosengrotz. From his journey around the world before founding the Rosicrucian Fraternity to the discovery of his tomb. This manifesto called for a universal reform. The Confessio Fraternitatis was published in 1615. This second manifesto complemented the first by, on the one hand, insisting on the necessity for a regeneration of humanity and society, and on the other hand, indicating that the Rosicrucian fraternity possessed the philosophical science that would allow this regeneration to be accomplished. It primarily addressed seekers wishing to participate in the work of the order and devote themselves to the happiness of humanity. Scholars of the time were much intrigued by the prophetic nature of the text. Using a style quite different from that used in the first two manifestos, The Chemical Wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz, published in 1616, told of an initiatory journey that represented the quest for illumination. This seven-day journey took place for the most part in a mysterious castle where the wedding of a king and a queen was to be held. In symbolic terms, The Chemical Wedding told of the spiritual path that leads an initiate to achieve union between his soul, the bride, and God, the husband. As historians, thinkers and philosophers alike have pointed out, the publication of these three Rosicrucian manifestos was neither insignificant nor untimely. 
It occurred at a time when Europe was undergoing an immense existential crisis. Politically divided, it was being torn apart by conflicting economic interests. Religious wars were creating unhappiness and despair, even within families. Science was developing rapidly and taking a materialistic bend. Living conditions were miserable for most, and only the elite could read and write. So the Rosicrucians broke their silence in order to call for more humanism and spirituality. To summarize the ideal that drove Rosicrucians in the 17th century, we may quote Comenius, who is considered today to be the spiritual father of UNESCO. We want all human beings, together or separately, young or old, rich or poor, nobility or commoners, men or women, to be able to receive a complete education and become accomplished people. We want them to receive perfect teaching and be trained not only in one or another subject, but also in what allows humans to completely realize their essence, to learn to know the truth, to not be misled by pretenses, to love good and not be tempted by evil, to do what they have to do and distance themselves from what they should avoid, to talk wisely about everything with everyone, and finally to always treat things, humans and God, with care and not rashly, and to never stray from their goal of happiness. Although it is true that the historic origins of the Rosy Cross date back to the 17th century, it would appear that its traditional heritage goes back much further. Some esoteric historians date it back to ancient Egypt, to the time of Amenhotep IV, better known under the name Akhenaten, who was the first to establish monotheism in Egypt. The majority of Egyptologists agree that mystery schools existed during this era. These were schools where one studied the mysteries of the universe, of nature, and of humankind itself. Such study gave rise to Gnosis, a secret knowledge that was perpetuated over the centuries. From Egypt, ancient wisdom is said to have spread to ancient Greece via the Pythagoreans, then to ancient Rome by the Neoplatonists. The alchemists of the Middle Ages inherited it and finally passed it on to the Rosicrucians in the 17th century. Indeed, in one of his books, Mikhail Meyer, who was a member of the Rosicrucian fraternity at the time, wrote, Our origins are Egyptian, Brahmanic, derived from the mysteries of Eleusis and Samothrace, the Magi of Persia, the Pythagoreans and the Arabs. The ancient legacy did not, however, remain frozen in the 17th century. It continued to be perpetuated throughout the centuries and gave birth to several Rosicrucian movements. In the 18th century, the most important of these was known as the Order of the Ancient System Golden Rosy Cross, which had such illustrious members as Prince Frederick William and Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick, who were said to have published the book, Secret Symbols of the Rosicrucians of the 16th and 17th centuries. This Rosicrucian movement was mostly interested in alchemy and hermeticism. In the 19th century, it was the Kabbalistic Order of the Rosy Cross, founded by Stanislas de Gaeta and Josephin Peladon, which attracted the most public attention. It was known particularly through the art exhibitions it organized in Paris. Famous symbolist painters such as Ferdinand Knopf, Emile Bernard, a friend of Toulouse-Lautrec and Gauguin, Georges Lefeur, Jean Delville, Charles Feligier and Eugène Grasset presented their works at these shows. In the words of Peladon, the aim of this Rosicrucian order was to restore in all its splendor the cult of the ideal with tradition as its basis and beauty as its means. 
It is worth mentioning that the musician Eric Satie was a member of this order and that he composed the Sonnerie de la Rose Croix during this period. Since the beginning of the 20th century, the ancient mystical order Rose Crucis has been the largest of Rosicrucian movements. It is open to men and women of all nationalities, all religions and all social classes and is present the world over, carrying out its work in several jurisdictions divided by language and known as Grand Lodges. Amorch is therefore both an international and cosmopolitan fraternity. It should be noted that it is recognised as being a public interest in several countries thanks to its contribution to culture and peace among peoples. The primary purpose of Amorch is to pass on teachings that are both cultural and spiritual. This is presented in written form over 12 degrees. In conjunction with this, members may, if they wish, meet in lodges to carry out group works founded on the oral tradition of the order, as was done in centuries past. It is also in these lodges, whose decorum is usually inspired by ancient Egypt, that initiations to the different degrees may be received. What do the Rosicrucian teachings address? If esoteric literature is to be believed, it covers a very wide area and incorporates the tradition's major themes, including the origins of the universe, time and space, the laws of matter, life and conscience, psychic phenomena, the nature of dreams, the functions and characteristics of the soul, the mysteries of death, the afterlife and reincarnation, traditional symbolism, the science of numbers and other mystical subjects. Rosicrucians are equally interested in the ontological links that exist between humans, nature and God, which they compare to the supreme intelligence behind all of creation at the beginning. According to them, this intelligence is inconceivable and unknowable, but manifests itself through so-called divine laws in terms of natural, universal and spiritual laws. From a Rosicrucian point of view, well-being and human happiness lie in respecting these laws, which means that one must study and know them. Parallel to its own teachings, the Rosicrucian order advocates a philosophy founded upon spiritual alchemy. This does not consist of transforming base metals into gold, as alchemists of old used to do, but transmuting the faults of human nature into their opposite qualities, pride into humility, selfishness into generosity, intolerance into kindness, etc. By applying this principle, Rosicrucians work towards self-improvement and strive to become better in their behavior, hence the traditional symbolism of the Knight of the Rosy Cross. In general, they believe that if there is evil on earth, it is because humans delight in their weaknesses and do not sufficiently aspire to good. Rosicrucian humanism consists therefore of improving the world by improving oneself. Amorque, preoccupied by events in the world and anxious to contribute to its development, published in March 2001 a fourth Rosicrucian manifesto, the Positio Fraternitatis Rose Crucis. Unlike the three manifestos published in the 17th century, which were essentially aimed at the intellectual elite, the fourth addresses a wider audience. In general terms, it paints a picture of the situation of humanity, a situation that Rosicrucians find extremely alarming. Indeed, they believe the world has become too individualistic and materialistic, which explains the many crises now faced by it. In addressing this crisis, they therefore call for greater humanism and spirituality, which in their view is the way forward to causing the earth to become a place of peace, harmony and fraternity.
We would also point out that Amork sponsors a university known as the Rose Choir University International. This internal university operates through different departments, including departments of Egyptology, Psychology, Music, Traditions, Philosophies, Medicine, Ecology, Art, Physical Science, etc. Each department makes its work known through conferences, seminars or congresses open to the public, as well as through books or articles published in Rosicrucian magazines. The main aim of the RCUI is to promote a spiritual culture and establish a bridge between mysticism and science in the light of the past and with the prospect of a future open to knowledge. Who married the rose to the cross? Wrote Goethe. Nobody knows. Since ancient times, the cross has been used for different purposes in many cultures and traditions. The rose, however, has always been the universal symbol of beauty, purity and love. For Rosicrucians, the two symbols combined have a very specific meaning. The cross symbolizes the physical human body and the rose in its center, its evolving soul. The rosy cross is therefore not a religious symbol. It represents the duality of the human being and the fact that it evolves from one life to another towards perfection until it reaches the state of wisdom. According to Rosicrucian tradition, whosoever attains this state is no longer obliged to reincarnate. Once it is fully developed, the rose of its soul no longer needs the cross in order to perfect itself. From then on, it will live in full consciousness in the divine immensity. This is perhaps where the meaning of this mysterious formula lies. Ad rosam per crucium, ad crucium per rosam.